Lord this morning. One of the stated reasons why we come together and observe the Lord's Supper is to remember Jesus. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. This was not some ego grab on Jesus' part, that I want to be remembered for the sake of being remembered. See, Jesus knew that he was the only way to the Father. And he knew that we as human beings are very forgetful creatures. And so he knew that this memorial was vital for us to remember him the only way to the Father. So as we come together and remember Jesus, it is for our benefit so that we don't get distracted with the things that this life has to offer us. The elements that we partake of this morning have a unique way of bringing our attention back to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so in Acts chapter 20, Paul finds himself talking to the Ephesian elders. He has called for them from Miletus to come down, and so he is having his final get-together with the elders of the Ephesian church. Now, he was part of this church for three years. Acts 20 and verse 25 says this, And indeed now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. God's church was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Paul goes on to talk about how when I leave, there are going to be people who come in from outside and people even from your own number who are going to try to draw you away from God, draw you away from Christ. Make you forget about Jesus and all the things that he has done for you. And then verse 31, he says this. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the critical point there is in verse 28 where he says, The church was purchased with the blood of Jesus. Now we know that the church is made up of individual people. And when someone has their sins washed away by the blood of Jesus, that God puts them in his church. Right? God does that. He puts them in his church. But there's also a very important element of what we do today that brings us together in a local fellowship and puts us in a very unique position before the Lord. Remember, Three years. And, and so if you think about it this way, Paul had occasion to gather around a table and to remember Jesus with the Christians at Ephesus 150 plus times, right? So he probably shared this meal with them multiple times. And what a unifying factor it was that he was willing to do this. Look at chapter 20 now and verse 36. It shows how close they had gotten through the years. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke that they would see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. What a strong relationship that he cultivated with them. And part of this relationship was built stronger by coming together and remembering Jesus and what Jesus had done for all of them. As a matter of fact, later when he writes the book of Ephesians back to these brothers and sisters in Christ, he reminds the brothers there that they are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and what? Gave himself for her. So it is central in our relationship together that we recognize that Christ gave himself not only for us as individuals, but also the collective. Because it is in the body, in this collective assembly, 
of God's people where this memorial is to be observed. That's significant. It is not meant to be remembered by ourselves at home. That's not what it was designed for. It was designed to be remembered collectively. Now, I understand that through the COVID process, we have had to sometimes take the Lord's Supper at our homes with our, our families, but we've also been able to be joined together through the live stream, even though we weren't at the same place. But that is not the plan, right? The plan is for God's people in a local community to come together and be in the same place and remember the Lord together. As a matter of fact, still in chapter 20, go back to verse 7, where he's at Troas, and at Troas he came together with the disciples to break the bread. Romans, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. If you go back to chapter 2, when the church first started, you also see the significance of taking the Lord's Supper together. It was something that they started observing immediately after becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. In verses 41 of chapter 2, it says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and about 3,000 souls were added to them that day. Verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and the breaking of bread and prayers. In both of these passages, the Acts 20 passage and the Acts 2 passage, the breaking of bread has to do with taking the Lord's Supper. There are times where breaking the bread is talked about in a common meal, but on both these occasions, it is referring to taking the Lord's Supper. And if you notice in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it says, the disciples came together. So it says, who did it? And that they were together. So disciples, followers of Jesus Christ in a local place, came together to remember this special occasion. And then in the Acts chapter 2 passage, we find out those who gathered to partake of the Lord's Supper were those who gladly received the word and were baptized. So those who were gladly received the message that Jesus Christ came to save them from their sins were baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ, had their sins forgiven, and the natural thing was, let's keep remembering this together. This is important. And so they did that on a regular basis. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul writes this letter to the Corinthians, a church that he was with for a year and a half. So 75 times together, together, on the first day of the week, approximately, to remember what Jesus had done for them. And while he gathered with them, I'm sure every single time, it was observed correctly. But now he departed, and they were not observing it correctly. But let's look at a couple things that illustrate the corrections that he's making to them and the importance of the togetherness. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God, remember that he purchased with his own blood, and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes again. 
I tried to emphasize it as I was reading the passage, but did you notice how important coming together was and being together is in partaking of the Lord's Supper? In verse 17, he says, I want to praise you, but you don't come together for the right reason. You don't come together for the good. You come together for a bad reason, and the outcome is bad. In verse 18, he says, when you come together as a church. And in verse 20, he said, when you come together in one place. And if you go drop down to verse 33, he's, this idea of what we do right now and the idea, the importance of doing it together comes out again because he says, therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. So there was a significant emphasis put on what we're doing right now, not only because it make, the blood of Jesus makes me right with God, but the blood of Jesus unites us as that last song that Herb led sings, as a spiritual family. It is the tie that binds us together. This memorial should not only serve the incredibly amazing purpose that Jesus specifically stated of remembering the Lord, but it should also serve as a way to bring us together, unite us in the Lord instead of dividing us as was in the Corinthian church. And it does that for many reasons and in many ways. First of all, I have the privilege of looking out today at a whole bunch of unmasked faces and I can see all of you and if you look around at this group you're going to see some things you're going to see that we share a common past we were all sinners People who share a common past oftentimes have a very significant bond. It may be people who serve in the military together. And they're so uh, united together that years and years and years, and because World War II now is so far away, these reunions don't happen very often anymore. But for years, 50 years, those guys who went to battle together, maybe were captured together, and they, they were released, they came back together, they were alive, they made it out of the war, and they wanted to get together with one another on a regular basis to remember what brought them together. We were all part of the same group of people that were there. Police officers a lot of times share a commonality. No matter where you are around the country, you have a connection. We've talked in our classes about how Christians, uh, I think Matt brought it up last time, no matter where you travel, they invited you to their house. There's this common connection. And if you travel around the country, you go someplace else on the first day of the week, and you remember the Lord's death, you remember it together with fellow believers. When we look at each other, we see that we share a common past. And although our sins may not be identical, the result and the consequence of those sins were identical. We were all lost. Think about this for a second. What we share together is we were both, we were all prisoners of Satan. We were all his slaves at one point. So we look around the room and we see people that we have a common past with. But that's not the end of the story. We look around the room and we see people that we have a common present with. Because when we look around the room, we don't look at each other as in prison garb and chains. We look at people who have been freed by this very memorial, the blood of Jesus Christ. So instead of getting together in a reunion weekly and looking at each other as these people dressed in prison garments and wearing chains around our necks and around our ankles, we see freed people. We see people who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we all share that in common together. We come together. We're united by the hospitality of Jesus as he invites us around this table together every single week. We shared a common past, we share a common present, and we share a common future. 
in college, we had chapel. And every semester, you got to pick your chapel seat. And it was one of those difficult things because the, uh, the newbies, you know, would get a, a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend at the end of first semester. And to show their commitment to one another, they would run and sign up for chapel seats together. And then they would break up over Christmas break, and they were stuck <laughs> sitting next to each other every single day for the entire next semester. What a dread that was. You had to go do that. Not that I did that. So you wanted to sign up for your chapel seat next to your good friends, friends that you knew were going to be your friends all next semester and all next year. When we come together on occasions like this, when we look at one another and we see one another, we see people who we would, with joy and happiness, be willing to sign up our names next to in our eternal home with the Father. People that we love here, that we know we can take that love to heaven with us. And if I am assigned a room in the Father's house, and it's right next to one of your rooms, I'll be thrilled. Amen. And that is what brings us together. We share a common past, we share a common present, and we look forward to being eternal neighbors where we share a common future. And all of that is only made possible through the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we are blessed people that we can remember him together every single first day of the week.